everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another new video. What I've got today is a thing app. No, not an app, a thing that I've been working on for a little while. Not that long. It's not that complex of a thing. Vim Tutor. I'm sure a lot of us have probably heard of the uh, original iteration of this. If I uh, fire open a terminal real quick, assuming that you have, you know, good old Vim installed. If you just type in Vim Tutor, you get this really nice little, uh, I should probably actually scale that down a little bit. Really nice little introduction to the app. It's literally just a text file. And you can go through this and it'll teach you a whole lot of the basics. And it turns out this is actually a pretty great way to learn Vim. If you just run through that Vim Tutor thing once a day for, I don't know, I think it took me like a weekend, a long weekend, maybe three or four days to get proficient enough with the app to make it my full-time text editor originally. But, you know, a week, a couple of weeks, a month, you'll know all those basic commands. The issue there is that uh, Vim Tutor, while it's really, really great and follows the Unix philosophy really well and doing one thing and doing it really well, actually doesn't include that much information. I mean, the original deal here is like seven, yeah, seven original kind of lessons and they're all showing you pretty basic things basically what i've done now is created a sequel to vim tutor so let's just go ahead and take a look at uh this app as of right now since it's not named package manager the easiest way to install is going to be just to do a git clone github.com slash me slash vim tutor and then from there all you'll have to do is clone or sorry change directory into the Vim Tutor directory. And if we look in here, there is a good old installation script there that makes it really easy. Dot slash install dot shell. Oh, you probably have to run it as sudo because it does install in the proper, uh, you know, directory. I don't even know my own password here. Okay, cool. So that's uh, installed now. If you want, you can just remove that. You don't need it anymore. It's fine. And uh, luckily enough, I was smart enough to make it run the same way as the original Vim Tutor. So, you know, normally, normal Vim Tutor, you type in Vim Tutor, it runs. You want to type in Vim Tutor. Now this one runs. So I guess at this point, there's a few other things that I could mention real quick. So if I come back to the original uh, GitHub page, I do mention that it's pretty easy to just not actually install this all. There's a link right here in the uh, GitHub readme where you can get just the plain text version of this. There's no reason you can't just save this in a text file and open it up. The original Vim Tutor app, the way that it works is it makes a temporary copy of uh, the Vim Tutor text file and opens that up in Vim. And that is the same way that my iteration works, but much less necessary. Um, there's no reason that you can't uh, manipulate the text that's in this file because, again, it does open it in a temporary file. But there's not like example. Actually, I probably should add examples to uh, manipulate. So I don't know. Let's just go through this here application. So level one, level one is just real quick and easy. Save and quitting files, colon X to save and quit. Or you can also use quit all to quit without saving anything. Lesson 1.2, this isn't a very complicated thing, but it is something that I use all the time. Uh, let's just put this example, I guess I'll see you into my downloads. And if I just do vim file name dot text, add something in here, good old colon x to quit. And then if I take a look, I did indeed actually create a new file with that file name. If I cat it out, it's exactly what I added. Not super complex, but handy to know. 1.3 is actually where it starts to get exciting. Uh, basically, the only way that the original Vim Tutor mentions to open a file is to do colon R, and then hopefully you know the actual file name of something in the directory that you're in, which luckily in this case I do, but that's not super helpful for a lot of people. You probably don't remember the exact names of the files that you're in. So there's quite a few different ways to go through, go about opening files in Vim. I think more than anything, probably what I use is a fuzzy finder which is a plugin that you can add to Vim. I don't know of a default way to have a fuzzy finder, but what you do have is a little command called explore, which is quite literally just a good old file explorer. Now, by default, this does actually open up to the directory that you're in, but what you can also do is, let's say I want to explore specifically my downloads folder, I can also do that. Uh, again, you have other commands like sex, and lex which are the same thing that just open a file manager either to the uh, the left or the bottom side of the screen respectively creating a mark basically what i can do is let's say i want to create a mark all the way down here at lesson 1.17 what i can do is just i'll put a mark right here and what i did there to create that mark was i hit m and then i typed any letter i'm going to use m a and that's going to mark this spot right here if i go all the way back up to the top of the file all i have to do is hit 
let's say in this case, I'm going to hit tilde A, and it's going to take me to that exact spot where the mark was. Uh, less helpful, I think. You can also just hit apostrophe A, and it'll take you to the beginning of the line where you created that mark. It's there. It's helpful. You know, that's been, that gives you way more options than you would ever need. So jumping to the start or the end of the file, you just saw me do that really quick, easy. GG takes you to the top. G takes you to the bottom of the file. Really easy. Can't screw that up. But again, really, really helpful. 1.6. Again, this is a really, really simple one. If you press V, you can just go into what's called visual mode, do a selection. And interestingly enough, what this allows you to do is you can search just this selection. So instead of searching the entire file, if I know there's something in just this amount of text that I selected, I can search mode. And hey, look, it's going to find an example of mode in this selection. Almost definitely the word mode is at other spots in this text file, but obviously we're just searching this. Uh, not something that I use a ton, but definitely helpful. Increment and uh, decrement numbers. Super, again, one of those things that I use all the time. Super helpful. If I come down to this example of a number that we have here and I just hit control A on this, I can make it go up by one at a time. And if I hit control X, I can make it go down. It also does mention here, well, I made sure to mention here, just because this is helpful to know for any command in Vim, you can just add anything in front of it. So assuming I'm in normal mode here, let's say I, add, I type in 20 or 22 on accident, and then I hit control A, it's going to add 22 instead of adding one. Interestingly enough, if I just hit the period key, I can repeat that command over and over again. So instead of counting up by one, I'm now counting up by 22 every single time. And that's actually less than 1.8. Uh, it's just you really, really need to know it. Oh, actually, no, that's not what Lesson 1.8 is. I meant to add that to Lesson 1.8, and I didn't, but I'll go ahead and add it. Uh, you know, hey, what the hell, we'll add it right here. Um, so what this is, is, again, basically the same thing. If you just ran a command and you want to repeat repeat it, you can just type, it's an add symbol, colon, or repeat the last macro that you executed. Just hit that side twice. Pretty simple. Changing case quickly. This is a nice one if you want a lower case. Is if you have a specific character under your cursor, instead of like replacing it, which you actually can do pretty quick, quickly just by hitting R to replace and typing the letter as you want. But in some cases, it might be simpler to just hit the tilde. And you can kind of see how you can go through a whole word and do that. Now, what you can also do is you can do G U and then emotion. So emotion would be something like, in the example here, we have G-U-W, which will uppercase an entire word. What we can also do is something like G, capital U, parenthesis. We'll go to the end of a parrot. We'll go, sorry, we'll go to the end of a sentence. Oh, hey, that's where it is. We got the repeat last change way later in the lesson. And I might need to reorganize this. We've been over that head period to repeat the last change that you did. Next up, uh, using jump lists. Then remembers where your cursor is then, so you can jump back and forth between locations. This one, I'll be honest, isn't really the kind of thing that I use a ton, but control I and control O, it, it has happened to be before. Like, let's say I'm right here at a specific position of my file, and then I'm not thinking about it. Somehow I accidentally hit like capital G. Obviously, that's going to take me to the bottom of the file. What I can do to return to where I just was, control O will take me right back there. You know, I mean, look, I, I'm sure there's somebody else who's seeing this and it's like, oh, wow, that's dope. I, that's going to help me out a lot, but it's not really something I use a ton, but it is helpful. Now, next up, lesson 1.12 is uh, importing and using just straight up shell commands. So, you know, let's say the example that I have here is if I do colon R and then I run the LS command, it's going to show me everything. That isn't really all that helpful. Something that I would use much more often is I might do like colon R and then run the date command and that'll just drop in a date. Along the same lines here, uh, if we do Q colon, you can see a list of all of the recent uh, Vim commands that we've used. Um, and of course, you can search that. It is occasionally helpful if I just did something and I need to remember exactly how I just did it. You can also just hit enter on it and it will repeat the exact same command for you over again. So, oh, yes. One of my favorite, favorite Vim commands ever, right? Let me get you an example here. Let's uh, maybe do like some CSS. Basically, what we're getting at here is change inside of X. CI is change inside of whatever. So the example here you can see is I see I quotes, if I come down to this height line here and I do change inside quotes, it's going to let me really quickly replace whatever's inside of there. Uh, change inside word, same thing, is just going to let me replace an entire word. It actually does get a little more interesting. So let's say we have a footer and then a footer. And then, okay, a footer is like the kind of thing where like you might have just lines and lines and lines of stuff inside of this particular tag, right? But at any point where I'm inside, in between these two tags, if I just hit CIT, change inside a tag, it's going to let me replace everything that's in there, which is just 
comically powerful. This is again one of those Vim commands where basically the first two letters are the operation and then the third is the motion. Word is the motion. T for tag is the motion. The quote for Shane is the quotes is the motion. You can add on any motion to that you want. Recording macros, I feel like we've been over this and some stuff, but I mean really easily. Okay, so here's what we could do. We'll do uh, Q and then B and then we're recording and then let's just do G uppercase U to the end of this deal. And then we can hit Q again. All I've got to do now to make this work on the next line is to replay the macro. So I would do at sign B. All right, last two commands, real quick and simple. This was pretty simple. It's just going through X modes. I'm not going to go super deep into this one, but you know, let's say if I'm right here and I want to just replace in the next five lines down instead of the entire file. What I could do is exactly what it says up here. I want to add just five lines. And then let's say I want to replace the word examples with the word, I don't know, arch, right? And then I do G. It'll do that, but only do it for the next five lines. And then as we mentioned earlier with a few other things, if you do a visual selection mode, there's also a way to do a find and replace just within that visual selection. And then the final lesson is in here for me, mainly just because I forget it all the freaking time. It's not even that complex, but, you know, let's say I open up a Lex window. That's going to open up a thing to the left. Obviously, you can click between them if you have on mouse mode in Vim, but all the time. All the time, I forget how to move between these. It's not that complicated. All you have to do is Control W and then any of the normal Vim movement commands, HJKL, will let you move around the windows exactly as you would expect. That's the kind of thing that I forget all the time. Anyways, uh, hopefully this is the kind of thing that'll help a few other people out there out. But if you're trying to learn Vim or you've been using Vim for a while and just want to get better at some of the more intermediate commands. None of these I would consider to be super complex commands, but if you're looking to get better at some of the more intermediate stuff, I think this will be a helpful thing too. Uh, obviously, feel free to leave comments or pull requests or whatever you want to do uh, to let me know if there's something I missed that you would be interested in. Uh, but that is going to be all for this video. Thank you everybody for checking it out, and uh, I will see you in the next one.